What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I want to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Iris Ohm, Fishcake, Forbidden Fan 12, Just Cyan, Saturn Coon, Smokin' Santa, Tenebris, Major, Luckless, Justin Perez, William Clark, Lunar Beats, Brian Imica and Joku, Virtue Will, Ross Lingard, Chris P, Lee Run Nan, Trent, Dimitri Rice, Maniacs, Avion Jays Turner, Fordron, Spencer, Sean Anderson, Scar X Scar, Anthony Escobar, J Vibe, Brendan Wallace, Zaquan Little, Shadow Man, David Brown, Michael Polson, Ericles, Raven Fighter 91, Carol Rollman, Peter Keo Lin, Dion Atwood, Joe Hardy, Icarus Crown, Ethan Vaughn, Melancholic Coffee, Dorian Wicks, Emmanuel Chavez, Ross Hatfield, KC, Chelsea Keel, Ezar, and as always, I'd like to give a big shout out to our executive producers, Joshua Fix, The Gimster 101, Bevan Brummett, and Vincenzo. Thank you all very much for your support. If you wish to become a YouTube member, feel free to click the join button, which is down by the subscribe button right down below. And if you want to check out our Patreon, feel free to click the link down below in the description to find out more. We'll see you there. Oh, I got a new tool. Wait, is this a... Oh my gosh, dude, I can melt through metal now. Yay! Any upgrades available? Hello, hello. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I got a full minute of blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> How about we just stop? Y'all gonna make me lose my mind. Up in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop! Oh, 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 oh! That's a way we ride and roll. R.I.P., man. Yeah. Holy I shit. miss. I, I'm gonna miss him. Uh, he was a character unto himself, but yet he, he was a human being before anything else. I remember that yeah. video you showed me. Of him crashing that guy's, uh, like, bachelor party. Oh, yeah, just w getting in the little party bus that they had. Yeah. And they were listening to DMX, and then, lo and behold... Here he comes, yeah. Party bus. I was like, holy DMX shit. And just started performing out of nowhere. Yeah, he just started going, it's like, X gonna give it to you, he gonna give it to you. First we gonna rock, then we gonna boom, then we let it pop. Go, let it go. And you know that that made their freaking wild. Absolutely, you know? man. I mean, yeah. hell. DMX just comes up on your bus singing, like, singing. Uh, I would evacuate my bowels. I would, well, I, well, I would, that would happen. don't know if that would happen, but I would definitely just be like, holy shit, DMX, what's mm -hmm. up? Oh, man, hype as hell. Yes. And, and then, of course, um, you know, the other, well, the, we're, as you all can tell by the name of the video, um, DMX meets David Bowie. And what, here's what a situation that would be. Here, here's the thing David Bowie. Loved to collaborate with people. I mean, he, he collaborated with Queen. He collaborated Some with... Some of his best songs. Yeah. He collaborated with Queen. He collaborated with, uh, like, various uh, rappers and various, uh, like, performers throughout the years. He, he collaborated with Tina Turner. He collaborated with Mick Jagger. I mean, just a, an all-around, like, great performer. As a matter of fact, uh, I don't know if you remember this, or I don't know if I told you this or not, but uh, you remember Stevie Ray Vaughan, right? Stevie Ray Vaughan of course. was performing uh, was performing uh, in one place, and David Bowie heard him. Mm -hmm. And David Bowie asked him to come t into his studio and record an album with him. And the album was Just Dance. Stevie, uh, it was a it was a David Bowie's best selling yeah. album. And Stevie Ray Vaughan played lead guitar on that album. And David asked him to be like his session musician and go on tour with him and all that. And Stevie Ray Vaughan turned him down. Mm -hmm. Stevie Ray Vaughan said I wanted, he wanted to do his own thing. And he did. He sure as fuck did. Yes. And again, another... And, and David Bowie said... I believe he said that he was a bit, you know, salty about what happened. And that Stevie Ray Vaughan turned down the opportunity. But after Stevie Ray Vaughan passed away, 
uh, David was like very remorseful of the fact that he never got to say he was sorry to Stevie and oh, always yeah. always wished that he could go back and just tell Stevie, you know, I'm sorry for, you know, being, you know, being, you know, a bit confrontational about that. But Steve, but David just wanted to make, wanted to have Stevie as his guitarist because he loved working with Stevie. Yeah. But again, you know, it's, I guess it's another reason why we never got another collaboration between Queen and David Bowie is because David Bowie has a confrontational way of like bringing music out of people. Like that's what he did with Queen. They were gonna go in there and record an, a complete something completely different, but then David Bowie changed up the session, and they wrote Under Pressure. Mm -hmm. And I think it was John Deacon, the bassist for Queen, that said that it was the most volatile recording session he had ever been a part of, but the end result was undeniable. The end result was rock and roll history. And yeah. the and right Under Pressure is like one of the greatest songs of all time. You know, Queen. Um had heat with everybody yes and they uh, freddie rubbed the sex pistols <laughs> oh god freddie rubbed freddie rubbed everyone in the band the wrong way dude like freddie was just like was uh, whenever he was high he got he egotistical loose, off of his loose guy he was but loose he also cannon, was egotistical loose in the bedroom <sighs> just loose in life and, and if you didn't like it fuck off yeah exactly yeah. and freddie was a boxer too that's what a lot mm -hmm. of people didn't know freddie was actually like a, a boxer from when he was a kid like he He's was training in boxing. unbelievable shape yes I mean, you look at what he did on stage in his prime and it's undeniable that he was fit as fuck as yeah far as what he could do so that doesn't surprise me that he had he had wind for days man oh so. yeah running around the stage <sighs> Just like you can attribute some of that to cocaine and like the times and everything. Whatever, but, but that doesn't say that doesn't... your ability to project your voice. See, if if he had done what he did standing still, it would be miraculous. Yes. But to do it while running around the stage, performing ballet, gesturing, practically. Yes. Just the great performer. That's what that's what everyone refers to him as in terms of his Dude, stage he's presence. The greatest. The one of. I don't know, man. He's got to be the greatest, greatest stage singer, presence, songwriter, performer of all time. Greatest stage perform, stage performer, probably Bohemian of all time. Bohemian Rhapsody is the greatest rock and roll song of all time. <laughs> I I would say, for me, I would agree with you on a lot of fronts. To me, there's a few that stand up there with it, but we'll have to see. But I, over time, I like my tastes change over time. It, the but song Bohem fluctuates. It's so dynamic. It incorporates like all aspects of rock music at some point in the song it's fucking and classical insane. yeah classical I mean, jazz metal, opera dude. yeah you it is I mean? so it's like incorporates all of it <laughs> i love i love it to it, me it's... yeah that's my argument for it oh no i agree with and it. the vast that's... majority of it written by freddie mercury yes it was well uh, he was a big fan of opera yeah and he was the one that came up with the concept of bohemian rhapsody and it doesn't take anything away from like deacon or may or roger and the contributions they had to it. I mean, Brian's contributions with the guitar solo and the licks oh, yeah. and stuff like that. And, of course, Roger Taylor being admits, able to hit the Galileo notes. He even admits that the most important part of the song is the vocals. Yes. And which, you know, Roger Taylor being able to hit the Galileos mm. up there and Freddie being able to, like, they layer... They all sing like a motherfucker. Like, that band... All super oh. talented. Four tremendous songwriters all coming together. That's one thing people forget about John Deacon. John Deacon wrote another one, Bites the mm -hmm. Dust. He wrote, he want, uh, You're My Best Friend. Like, he mm -hmm. wrote so many great songs. And and all of them came together and made some great like some great stuff. While they could, man. Yes. We never know. And, yeah, but David Bowie. David Bowie, I remember like when he was on his last legs mm -hmm. you know, with cancer and he released his final album before he passed away. Black Star. Mm -hmm. I listened to it and it was almost like a funeral march. Johnny Cash's was too. Yeah, you could tell like American recordings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, when the man comes around, that was just. To the legends, man. Yeah, I don't have. I, I do have a drink right here. Yeah. To the legends. <laughs> so, anyway. We got DMX meets David Bowie here. This oh, is a God. short little thing that Chad recommended we look up. So, uh, anyway, let's go ahead and give this a watch. Here we go. Just this. 
or Let's Dance. Stevie Ray Vaughan on the lead guitar in that song. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo! It's 12 o'clock at night. This fella, uh. D M X X! Uh, 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 knock, knock! Open up the door, David! Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, 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 I know it, how to get up in the fucking building! Yeah. Kick down the door! No, no, no! Wait up, David! Wait up! Damn. Wait up! Damn. Uh, 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 come up, Ross! In the shine! Uh, 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 I really have so little. Man, come on! I know you're lying. What you got? A piece Saw of that Iggy Pop picture there. Though. A birthday cake. It was amazing. That's my style. Yes, I know, and unfortunately, I keep coming back to it. You come know. on, David, please. Um, fine. What? Let's get it on, baby. <laughs> it's disappeared. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. I ain't a thirsty dog, but right about now my throat's getting real dry. You got the Kool-Aid? Of course. Jammers, uh, hell yeah. Like, damn. Wonderful. I came out to play games. Oh. Trouble. Damn. The puzzle. Uh -huh. Snakes and lettuce. What you got? Okay, I have Monopoly. No! I ain't got the patience. Uh, <laughs> I would play the Monopoly. I ain't really got the time to waste. Oh, it, it, hell, I mean, I just thought the Monopoly was the very best. What? You think it's a game? You think it's a game? I'm not sure. Motherfuckers! A fucking game! Oh, yes, it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh. <laughs> Go to jail? What? Well, I'm extremely happy. <laughs> oh yeah! Hell yeah! Tails can't go quick like a song. I hope that I'm somebody that other artists could uh, look to as maybe friends. For real? Wow! This is unbelievable. How many times do I have to tell you, rap cats? I have a friend. B W I A. Bowie, wonderful, and no lies. I just thought we'd be buddies forever and get on better and better and all. D M X and David Bowie, friends for life. I, I will be king. No. <laughs> and you. And you. You will be king. <laughs> Damn by the day. One, two, three, four. Ain't no other cats got love for me. Ain't no cats gonna bust love for me. Ain't no cats gonna shed love for me. But my dog is gonna be a thug for me. Ain't no other cats got love for me. Ain't no cats gonna bust love for me. Ain't no cats gonna shed love for me. But my dog is gonna be a thug for me. I love my get down for the whole. Only reason to come around is for the whole. Fight work, I lay it down for the whole. Fly away, boys. Open up shop. Fly away home, fellas. That's the thing, man. Their music will always, will always have it, man. We will always have their music. There's a live version of Heroes that uh, I have listened to a trillion times, and it is so fucking good. It that is. That song man. is so simple. It is. So simple. But, but just the way that it's delivered and the lyricism, it is fucking gut wrenching and it just rips at your heart. Straight. It does. It, you just it's feel just it. It's the ringing, you know. It's... Yeah, and and when you actually mm. hear like the the techniques that David Bowie used for like the because here's the thing, 
they wanted to have reverb on it, but they didn't mm -hmm. have enough tracks for it, like how you would have traditional reverb. So instead, they figured something else out, and they spaced out the microphones in the room David Bowie was singing in. And when David like turned off, like 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 blasted his vocals, like full, like sang full, like they switched up like which microphones were recording, like at at that time, and they got the furthest one back for like the end of Heroes, like whenever he, you like hear him singing in the distance, yeah. and. That's how they got that. That's how they did that trick, and is is so brilliant. And also, David Bowie uh, and his his performances as well. He all, I, everyone knows him as, as Ziggy Stardust. Everyone yeah. remembers Ziggy, but people don't remember like the thi the the the, the Thin Man because mm -hmm. when he when he went on Soul Train, Soul Train, and he had Golden Years mm -hmm. and he had Fame, two songs that were just like funky as hell. Yeah. And even Dr. Mm. Cornelius. That used to be uh, stunning Steve Austin's intro music. Mm -hmm. Fame. Fame. Yes. Yeah. And just and he goes on Soul Train as the thin man, you know, yeah. slick back blonde hair, set, like like Sander Belt suit, cigarette in his mouth. It's where the talking heads look came from. Yeah. Just pulls out the cigarette and starts singing Fame and just like goes to, and just like up on stage, just like strutting around like a pimp. And then everyone was just grooving, dude. Everyone yeah, just grooving I'll to David Bowie, and just it, it was it was strange seeing that. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. it's like you hear this funky stuff going on, and then this paper thin white dude with slick back blonde hair, pale as a ghost, up on stage is yeah. just like, woo! Well, him knock him Prince, dead. Him and Prince were deceptively incredible songwriters yes. for other people. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's the other thing, too. You know, they wrote so songs for others. So many hits, you'll be like, oh my god, man, the Rolling Stones do this so well. And it's like, yeah, yeah. that's Bowie. Bowie wrote that, you yeah. Know, and that goes for Prince, too, man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> nothing compares to, to you. you. That's Prince. Yeah, man. that, yeah. Sinead O'Connor, yeah, everyone thinks, you know, <clears throat> Sinead O'Connor. No. It's like, no, it was no, Prince. that is Prince. Prince wrote that. But um, among countless other songs that people made famous, and, and it was really Prince, and Bowie was in that same category. Yeah. I, I mean... It's insanity, dude. How talented. How talented some people are, man, yeah. and like, when they're in the groove, yeah. it's just, you, you, you can't stop them. Yeah. You can't stop them from just being super creative and just putting themselves out there and changing the world. And on behalf of X, yeah, his influence on on oh his the game on East hip hop dude was delivery beyond anybody's ability to. People tried to replicate DMX. You can't, but you can't be that voice, that delivery, that fucking intensity energy that comes from every time you hear him. It's just like you know exactly who that is, and there is no other. Yes. And yeah. that's the thing, and that's the problem, like nowadays with rap, because you know you've heard Snoop Dogg mm. talk about it. Everyone tries rapping the same, oh, yeah. like the Migos or whoever. Like, it's like everyone tries the exact same, but you, and you always go back and forth. It's like, is this Migos or is this like Fetty Wap or is this who is who's who is? Well, this? there's and then there's who innovate their style and then everybody bandwagons on it and stuff yeah, like I know but, that Big Sean has had a big problem with that yeah and, you know there's people out there that like like Drake he just started doing more like singing style Lil Wayne songs yes like he took Lil Wayne's metaphor style writing and had all his ghost writers who were paid out the gills to remain anonymous and write lyrics for Drake you know, and it was like, write like Little Wayne, and I'm gonna sing this, and that's it. The same people that were writing for Little Wayne were writing from Drake for Drake when he first signed to the Little Wayne's label. It, it's yeah, that's money. all that yeah. game is. But you're talking about some some guys who can not only write but perform and deliver. Yeah, but my my point that I was trying to make, man, is that. Everyone's try you know, too busy trying to sound like this one group here. Whereas DMX, all he ever wanted to do was put his voice out there, yeah. be himself. Yes, and he was. That was it. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some shit that he said in the past. There's like always so many there's, people well, that is very questionable in nature and like kind of hateful. But it's like 
you know, that's you, you, human humanity is fucked up, man. People do and say you, you know up shit. But everyone who expects people to be perfect, yeah, <clears throat> everyone expect like everyone you know, as much as of, of a paragon as some people can be, they're not perfect, Mm-mm. and it's just like uh, that's just like um, Kobe Bryant. You know, Kobe Bryant, great you know, great example of like a basketball player, a tremendous athlete, a like like. A mentality topped only by Michael Jordan in terms of like like visceral winning. like winning. Win, have yeah, to win. and there and you see, I know people like there were people like right after Kobe had passed away, right after. Oh yeah, dogpiling on his past. Yeah, on his past and like the allegations and all that. When in truth, uh, they're act they're you know three court cases, three, no evidence found of any wrongdoing, no evidence. I mean, it, it... Except, well, I almost made an off-color comment. I'll just leave it to myself. Fair enough. But all in all, man, it's just... I was going to mention the ring his wife got after the fact. Because it was headline news. It's not like I came up with it. It was just yeah. a huge deal that there was a big-ass fucking rock on his wife's hand after the whole situation. <laughs> but anyway... Well, um, well, that's that's a whole thing. I mean... But... I, I really hate that situation went down at all, that anybody would feel like something had happened to them and all that, but the lead up to that whole situation, you know, doesn't look like no anybody was kind of forced in any kind of way. No, it just <laughs> seems to me, you know, once again, people, and there's examples of it because it's there's evidence that people do it out there. You know, others, you know, going after someone for a quick settlement, like to, to, to ruin, hush hush. It can ruin people when it's look. He, what about Enzo Amore, man? That guy <sighs> allegations was ruined. Yeah, and he did nothing. Oh, same thing for Carson, dude. Oh yeah, really? Same thing for Carson. Allegations thrown out at the wazoo from two different people. But yet, here's the thing: everyone says, "Oh, you know, it's clear. Yeah, you know, he was doing this and doing that." It's just like no, because the truth is. We've only seen this one person's point of view, whereas mm-hmm. there's so there's so much left out in terms of the context. And not only that, but the stuff that was said wasn't even like what people would consider, you know, grooming. Oh like, yeah. And people are also just like, well, he's 21 and they're 17. It's like, no, he was 19 and they were 17. And in every state, every state, that is, you know, there is nothing illegal with that. Well, they're cohorts, even in sociology and. In their cohorts, they're within the same like couple of years. Like, yeah, I I would get it if it was like somebody who was a, you know, mini lad se- or somebody who was a junior in high school and they were dating somebody in middle school. Like that's, that, that'd be messed you know, up at that point in. <clears throat> in but you know, growth. But if like someone's but if someone's a senior in high school <clears throat> and they're dating someone who is a freshman in college, what the fuck? Yeah, that's not that's nothing. I feel like he was on a throne and people wanted to knock him off of it. Of course they did. That's what it seems. Uh, of like course they me. did, and it's and it it's unbelievable, man. But it's, then you've got these these people like uh, Onision and shit who make comebacks and shit after proven, you know, serious abuse and and grooming and just countless other. No one and no one says a word. Nobody gives a shit. In fact. Since we're on the subject, there is literally a rap song that came out in the past like five or six years called You Don't Even Know It, where where a rapper literally says he, he roofies a chick, takes her back to the place, lays it down, and she don't even know it. And it's one of the most popular songs. You know, I mean, I've it's never heard millions I've of views, man. And never heard all it. kinds of famous rappers that if you looked it up, you'd know exactly who they were. And they're still famous, and nobody gives a shit. But why is there not a a stone cast in that direction? Because people are biased on who they want to hold accountable. Yeah, they are. People are so, extremely biased, and you know, I hate it. I hate that that's the reality. Take out the trash when it's actually trash. Exactly. And well, we got to end it here, everyone. Yeah. This was DMX meets David Bowie. This was really good. I'm leaving a like on this. Rest in peace, DMX. Rest in peace, David Bowie. Thank you all so much for tuning in. If you want to see more from the original creator, Aaron Long, his name will be in the title of the video. If you want to check him out, feel free to do so. 
And I guess until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. We'll see you then, everyone. Peace out.